Assalamu alaikum. Um, I promise not to take too much of your time. I'm sure everyone's tired and wants to get some snacks and go home or go to other programs. So inshallah, I'll make this brief. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I begin in the name of Allah, the one who is glorified by whatever is in the earth and whatever is in the heavens. And he is the Almighty, the All-Wise. He is Allah, the Creator, the Maker, the Former, and to him belongs the best names. In Surah Dariyat, in Ayah 56, Allah says, I did not create the jinn and the humans except that they may worship me. In order for us to worship Allah as he deserves to be worshipped, Allah has provided us with two nabis or prophets. One is the inner nabi, which, are, which is our conscience, and the outer nabi is the one who comes to awaken and remind the inner nabi. When these two nabis work in conjunction with, uh, with, with each other, humans can then strive towards human perfection. You and I have an advantage in our striving, for we have been blessed with the external Nabi, who is none other than Prophet Muhammad al Mustafa ibn Abdullah. Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about his beloved in Surah Azab, Ayah 21, in this way. He says, In the Rasul, there is certainly for you, for us, a good, an excellent, the best exemplar for those who look forward to Allah and the last day and remember Allah greatly. This example, which we refer to as his sunnah, is there for us to emulate and infuse within our bodies. There's a hadith from Imam Jafar al-Sadiq. The Imam says, a person is not considered to be one of our Shia if he proclaims our virtues with his tongue, yet his actions contradict our actions and sayings. Therefore, the inner Nabi and the outer Nabi have to become one and the same. So the Sunnah of Rasulullah becomes the way of life of his followers. His Sunnah is a movement. It is not static, it is, but dynamic. It is revolutionary. It is revolutionary of the mind, of the body, of the spirit. It is an individual revolution and it is a social revolution. This is the Sunnah upon which Imam Ali salam, was raised, and that is to establish justice. Upon which Imam Al Hassan was raised, which is to exemplify akhlaq. Upon which Imam Hussein was raised, which is to enjoin the good and forbid the wrong. And upon which Fatima to Zahra was raised, and that is to fight against oppression. History has recorded her stand against tyranny on many occasions, but one example is particularly evident, and that is when she went out into the masjid of her father, and she gave a speech, and she reminded the Muslims, and she awoke their conscience, and she told them about the injustice that had been done to her, and about the status of her father, and about the usurpation of her rights. And beside her stood Zainab. Zainab. After her mother, she was the most illustrious woman during her time. She exemplified modesty, submission, intelligence, taqwa, akhlaq, knowledge, and eloquence. Zainab was an authority for Muslim women in religious affairs, steadfast with her salah. Even in the 11th night of Muharram, she offered all the recommended prayers and salah to layl. Zainab, the embellishment of her father. Zainab, the mother of On and Muhammad. Zainab, the protector of Nubuat and Imamat. Zainab. Um Rabab. She gives her six month old son to fight in the cause of Islam. Um Kuthum. Um Farwa. She gives permission to her son Qasim to go and support his uncle. Fidda, Sakina. Um Wahab tells her son, Wahab, go and support your Imam. These are the women of Karbala. You cannot recount the history of Karbala without talking of these women. There is no way that the mention of Karbala is complete without mentioning of their names and their sacrifices. Some people will ask, why did the Imam go and bring his family? Why did he bring these women to Karbala? Why would he do this to them? He's not doing this to them, it's for us. These women were the conscience and the communicators of Karbala. They are the reason that we know about the tragedy that took place in Karbala. 
So they went so that they can expose the tyrants and tell the world what has befallen the Prophet's family. All these women in general, and Zainab in particular, witnessed the scenes of her brother's revolution and spread its values and made it eternal. Its goals through her wonderful sermons in Kufa, in Damascus, and in Medina. When she was confronted by Ibn Ziyad's ignorance, when he asked her, how did you see that which Allah did to your brother? She said, I see nothing in it but beauty. When she was in the Muhammad. And in Yazid's court, she stood up to the tyrant and she said to him, So scheme whatever you wish to scheme and carry out your plots and intensify your efforts by Allah. You shall never be able to obliterate our mention. You will never be able to kill the revelation, nor will you exalt to our position, nor will your, na your shame ever be washed away. Your view shall be futile, your days are limited in number, and your wealth wasted on the day when the callers shall call. Curse of Allah be upon the oppressors. Through eloquent speeches and tears, the message of Hussein has prevailed. Here in Damascus, Zainab speaks to the women of, of Syria, and the, uh, the majlis is established, which the tragedy of Karbala goes from her mouth to the ears of the women. And they go home and they recount this to their menfolk. And through this, the message of Karbala has traveled through on the wings of time to us. This is how the message of Karbala was spread, through the tears of women and through the eloquence of Zainab. And none followed her, her uh, undaunting spirit, her eloquence and willingness to fight against oppression except Umre, the wife of Mukhtar, who, ex who exemplified Zainab's sunnah uh, when she was confronted by Musab ibn Zubair. Musab ordered his orders to arrest Mukhtar's wife. And Musab asked her to disown her husband, and she said, I will not disown him. He fasted in the day, he said his prayers at night, and he sacrificed himself for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the apostle. He took revenge on Imam Hussein's followers. Musab said, you are God's enemy. Do you dare to support him? She said, your idle threats are nothing. I, to die as a martyr for Allah is better than this world. I will die and enter paradise. And there's nothing more important to me than Imam Ali alayhi salam. Fearing her speeches may arouse the conscience of the Muslims. That she may instill some revolutionary spirit into the Kufans. Musab decides to kill her. And in the dark of the night, a person took her to a place between Hira and Kufa. And in that desert, she was beheaded. And she died a martyr for Imam Hussein. To my sisters, I say, uphold the Sunnah of Rasulullah by following the footsteps of Fatima and Zainab. Be the conscience of society. Be the communicators of truth and impose injustice. For indeed, Allah says in Surah Jathia, do those who have perpetrated misdeeds so that suppose that we shall treat them as those who have faith and do righteous deeds, their life and death being equal. Evil is the judgment that they make. Allah has created the heavens and the earth with reason so that every soul may be requited for what it has earned and they may not be wronged. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Sure, sure.